grew up in one of the roughest neighborhoods in New York City, the youngest of seven children with five brothers and one sister. For protection, my mother would carry a bat when she took us to the park. Kids in the neighborhood would say, don't mess with her, she's crazy. People would try and break into our home, but we had bars on the windows, so they couldn't. If you heard someone scream in the night from outside, you knew enough not to look out the window. Someone might see you. Mom started having nervous breakdowns when I was about three. My father drove a cab from age 27 until 42 when he had his first heart attack. He never was able to work again. For the next 24 years, my father basically sat in a chair. I always felt like we were walking on eggshells. I didn't want to upset mom, and I didn't want to get dad mad. He never drank, was home a lot, but he seemed to be angry all the time. My dad was the toughest guy on the block, and for our neighborhood, that was saying something. Before he was 21, his nose was broken so many times, they finally just removed the bone. Because my dad grew up hating his mother, he would always tell us, don't ever hate me or you'll be just like me. For years, I didn't get along with him, mostly out of fear. All my father had to do was call my name and I'd burst out crying. I can still remember how that felt. While in the hospital with his first heart attack, he told God, you can't have me yet. I still have young kids to raise. I'm the youngest of the seven. When I was 18 years old, I sat down with my dad and we talked out a lot of things. I told him if I'd have been his wife, I would have thrown him out in the first year. He said, that's why I didn't marry someone like you. I thought that was pretty funny. He once told me that of all seven of us kids, that I was the most like him. Considering I had five brothers, I was highly insulted. He said he didn't mean it as an insult. Over time, God got a hold of my heart, my mom's, and then dad's. Once in a Bible study, I told the group the proudest I was of my father was the day in church I saw him lift his hands in worship. I knew how hard it was for him to surrender to anything. It took a great deal of humility for him to do that. His eyes watered and he said he was surprised something like that would make me proud of him. He would tell my mom that his daughters were a blessing in his old age. I was glad. On April 22nd, 1995, I got married. Dad didn't think he would be able to walk, but I told him that if I had a choice, I would rather he was able to dance with me than walk me down the aisle. When I was little and he came home from work, he would sit in his big chair, turn up the phonograph so I could hear it, and put on Daddy's Little Girl. When I heard it from the other side of the apartment, I knew it meant I could go sit with him. I would run and jump on his lap and he would sing that song to me. It was those times that I felt the most loved. On my wedding day, he stood up from his wheelchair to dance with me. I felt like I was holding him up, so I asked him if he was okay. I told him he didn't have to do it if it was too much. He ignored me and just kept singing Daddy's Little Girl in my ear along with the song, Not a Dry Eye in the House. Three months later, at 66 years old, my dad passed away. I figured he must have told God, okay, my youngest is all grown up now. I'm ready to come. You're the end of a rainbow, a pot of gold. You're daddy's little girl that heaven holds. A precious gem is what you are And your daddy 